Anybody home? This is where I report a stolen car. Yes, senor. Come in. What is your name? Swanson. I'm running the gun club back in the hills. Swanson. Hmm? Ah, uh, what kind of a car? Dark green steak bed truck. Ten and a half, California license. Loaded with groceries. Uh-huh. Where was it taken from? Yeah. That's a hard question to answer. Look, here's what happened. The season opens next week, and I'm expecting a crowd down. So I was stocking up on supplies, bringing this truckload of groceries down from Calexico. Get the picture? Well, I'd left the club station wagon in San Felipe, get a new rear end put in. So when I got there, I had to stop and pick that up, too. Get the picture? Now, I couldn't run two cars, so I hired this kid to drive the truck. Started him out, oh, a couple, three hours ahead of me. Followed him in the station wagon. Get the picture? Well, he was supposed to meet me here. He hasn't arrived yet, and that was yesterday. Mm, have you looked for him? Everywhere. Well, then he must have gone back to the club. Well, I just came from there. Then you must have passed him up somewhere on the road from San Felipe. If I passed him on the road, don't you think I'd know my own truck? <laughs> I'm sure you would, senor. But what if it went off the road? There's no place he can pull off the road without getting stuck in the sand. Then how could your truck be lost? If it wasn't lost, would I be coming to you? <laughs> that is a good question, senor. Uh, tell me about this boy that was driving it. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Miguel something or other. Uh, 15, 16 years old. Dark, thin, but, uh, but so high. Would you know him if you saw him? Yes. Come across the street with me, senor. That's him. Where's my truck? Ah, un momento. What's the matter with him? Doctor, ¿qué cree usted que tiene el chamaco? El chamaco está muy grave. Aún no ha recuperado de su tensión nerviosa, señor. Miguel is a very sick boy. He's suffering from shock. What from? ¿Qué cree usted que fue la causa, doctor? Pues, ¿quién sabe? Nobody seems to know. What did you do with my truck? Miguel, el señor quiere saber qué hizo con el camión. Contéstele. ¿Qué hizo con el camión? ¿Qué te pasó? Más fuerte. Mire, doctor, si se pone mejor el paciente, haga favor de notificarme, ¿eh? Muy bien, así lo haré. What do you say? It's no use. If he gets any better, the doctor will let us know. Uh, come with me. I will take you to the place where he was found. make these tracks? Must have. I had two new retreads like that on the rear. Uh-huh. Came down the road, they got stuck. Yeah. Then where'd it go? Straight up in the air, it looks like. Look, that truck had a radio and a heater, but it didn't have wings. Now you're gonna find it or aren't you? Look, senor, I am just a country policeman. I am paid to keep the peace. If someone steals, I try to catch the thief and put him in jail, like it says in the book. But about this, senor, I don't know. Uh, the book doesn't say anything about a thing like this. And that's the latest report on the international scene. Now on the lighter side of the news. A dispatch from Guavas, Mexico, says that Mr. John Swanson is having a little trouble collecting insurance on his stolen truck. What happened to it? Well, according to his claim report, it disappeared without leaving any tracks. Mr. Swanson says something must have carried off his truck. Now, what could have carried off his truck? 
And here in Los Angeles, the city council has decided to vote upon the referendum for increasing the pay of teachers. With the interest that has recently been aroused regarding the importance of better schools, it is possible Operator, that I want to place a person-to-person -person call to Mr. John Swanson in Guavos, Mexico. I'll hold the line. I'm getting me a good lawyer. And if one ain't enough, I'm getting two. I'm going to make that insurance company pay up and pay up fast. I'm taking them to court by the... I'm sorry. I, I guess I shouldn't blow my top like that. But when somebody calls me a liar, I... Excuse me. Joyce Manning? Yes. You must be Major Baird. Please come in. Thank you. This is Mr. Swanson, Major Baird. How do you do, sir? Howdy. Please be seated. Thank you. Would you like a drink? Uh, no, thanks. Mr. Swanson was good enough to come up here and tell me of his experiences. No, it was a mere nothing. I had to be in Los Angeles anyway today to see the insurance people. Have I missed much? Well, he tells me that he wasn't there to see what happened to his truck. No, I, I guess I got there just too late. Besides the trucks not being there, did you see anything unusual? Like what? Tracks in the sand. Uh, there were car tracks, sure. But no animal tracks? Animal tracks? Human footprints, Mr. Swanson. Well, what's so unusual about that? These would be the tracks of a big man, a very big man. Well, there were Miguel's. Uh, I don't get the picture. How big do you mean? Very big. Ten times as big as you. Are you trying to kid me? Not at all. I'm trying to find my brother. He got a bad dose of radiation poisoning in the course of testing a plutonium bomb. He started growing at the rate of eight to ten feet a day. You may have read about him. Sure, Colonel Glenn Manning, the colossal man. I remember. Glenn had reached a height of over 60 feet when he disappeared. Well, didn't he get shot and fall off a boulder dam and get killed? That's right. But Miss Manning seems to have an idea that he survived both the artillery fire and the fall. That is what you're getting at, isn't it? I'll leave it up to Mr. Swanson. Wouldn't that account for the disappearance of your truck? Look, lady, leave me out of this. I didn't see no footprints. I didn't see no giant. I didn't see anything. I've got enough trouble with the insurance company as it is. Get the picture? Uh, I gotta be going. Can you think of anyone else who might help me? There's a boy named Miguel down there, but he's not doing any talking. Doctor said he's suffering from shock or something. I'm sorry I can't do you more good, Miss Manning. Thank you for coming, Mr. Swanson. Good day. Goodbye. Hadn't you better give him up, Miss Manning? The Army did some time ago. You never found his body. The river below the dam is a mile deep in some places. His body's down there somewhere, and it'll show up in time. You think Glenn made his way down that river somehow and reached the Gulf of California, don't you? Believe me, it's impossible. I was in charge of the search for him, and I know. The medical authorities all agree no man, no matter what his size, could take those two bazooka charges and a drop of over 700 feet and come through it alive. Well, those are the facts. Take my advice and face them. I shall, Major. Well, thank you for coming. I'm afraid it wasn't worth your while. It could be if you'd have dinner with me this evening. Oh, I'd like to, but I can't. I'm leaving for Mexico right away. Goodbye. Goodbye. That is the boy, Miguel. Has he told you anything yet? No. But you can question him if you like. He's supposed to speak a little English. Miguel. Miguel. You see, senorita, you better come with me. I will find a place for you to spend the night. Thanks, but I'm going to stay here. All night? So long as necessary. Then my wife better get you something to eat. Thank you.
I do not understand what he's trying to say, senorita. Call me if he speaks again. Hmm? Ah! I'm there! I'm there! <laughs> Miguel. Miguel, cálmate. Miguel, Miguel, cálmese. What does he mean? Ah, it's hard to say. Oh, Brown, what is that? It's a, a big fellow, like an ogre in a story, a monster, a, a giant man. He must have been dreaming. Was it a giant, Miguel? Was it a giant man? Was it Miguel? We left within an hour after I got your phone call. This is Dr. Carmichael. He's head of our radiation exposure. He's very much interested in your brother's case. I only hope I can do something for him, Miss Manning. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, Dr. Carmichael, Major Baird, this is Sergeant Murillo of the Mexican State Police. Where was it the boy saw the colossal man, the giant? El Hombron? Uh, he has not been able to tell us. The sergeant can show you where the truck disappeared, though. You see, senor, won't you get in my automobile? Fine. This is where the boy Miguel was found. These tracks were made by the truck he was driving. The truck apparently skidded into the water. It never drove out. What do you think, Mark? Uh, it seems like pretty meager evidence to conclude because a truck disappeared that the colossal man's still alive. But the boy. Oh, I'm sure there's some logical explanation. Senores, senores, come quickly. That is a very big footprint. Major Baird, is that enough logic for you? The foot that made that print is about 10 times the size of a normal man. That would make him about 60 feet tall. Glenn was 60 feet tall. He must have gone that way, to the mountains. You think he could be up in those mountains? Yes, it could be. There are no people up there. Well, let's drive slowly. Maybe we could find some more footprints. The ground is too hard here. I see something over there. Let's take a look. This must be part of Swanson's missing truck. No, this is another truck, senorita. Swanson's truck is dark green bed state, ten and a half. Nothing but a rock slide. It is getting late. We better go home. It is not good to be here after dark. Thank 
Thank you. Oh, no thanks. I have plenty. Sorry to be so long, but I just talked to the Mexican military authorities on the phone. They have troops and artillery standing by. All we have to do is pinpoint the colossal man, and they'll move in on him. He might come willingly if we reasoned with him. How do you reason with a 60-foot giant? It's possible he'd listen to somebody he knows well, like Miss Manning. Why not try it? No, I, I don't want anybody getting hurt. Please let me try, at least. No, I'm sorry. Oh, be reasonable. If you use force on him, somebody will get hurt. Very well, then. I'll go alone. Wait! Wait, Miss Manning! Miss Manning, I didn't ask for this job. I was assigned to it. And if I'm going to get it done, I'll have to handle it my own way. Well, it seems to me your way is going to hurt him more than help him. I have to think of the safety of others as well as him. That goes for you, too. I'm to forget he's my brother and do nothing, I suppose. Well, it's natural for you to be concerned about him. But can't you let it go at that? Well, you don't even know if he'll recognize you or not. Let me find out. We'll see about it tomorrow when the soldiers arrive. Oh, today, please, before they get here. Please. What makes you so sure you're going to find him? Well, he has a whole mountain range to hide in. Oh, we have something to go on, those footprints. All right, get in my car. Waiting these trucks for food to live on. This was a rifle. Major, look at this. It's his thumbprint. This was Swanson's truck. baking it the way you want it, senor. I think it's all right. When will the rest be done? They say it would be ready soon. They are already loading the truck. Good. Try it. Have you tasted anything? Tastes like bread. What's in it? Chloral hydrate. Enough to put him to sleep for eight hours. I'll be at the bakery. We have to capture him, and this seems to be the best way. Dr. Carmichael says it can't harm him in the least. Isn't there any other way to handle it? Well, it's that or let the Mexican authorities deal with him. We have no other alternatives. 
Nobody's taken the time to think of any, as far as I can see. There isn't time to take. If we don't get him before he decides to move to another mountain, we may lose contact with him for weeks. I suppose you're right. His face. I can't forget how horrible it was. Where are you from, Joyce? My home is in San Francisco. Don't you think you'd be better off back there? Do you know what it would be like to be just sitting around waiting for news? Do you mind if I suggest a remedy? It's an old one, but it usually works. Find something else to occupy your mind. Do you have a job? I write copy for an advertising agency. Well, that should help you forget your troubles. I can imagine myself going back to writing all those tired old adjectives. Tremendous, gigantic, colossal. You know what they'd mean to me now, don't you? Glenn. A colossal freak major. And he's my brother. We're all set, Major. Tex Swanson's truck. You think he'll eat the stuff? All depends on his appetite. There hasn't been a truck through this road for two days now. He should be hungry. Let me drive. I know this road best. All right. There's still no sign of him. If we don't make contact, we'll make the trip again. This way to make you nervous, senores. But the faster we go, the more dust we make, and the further away we will show. Besides, giants run very fast. They have long legs. of Army Colonel Glenn Manning, the colossal man who went berserk in Las Vegas not long ago, is in the news again today. Military authorities last night admitted that the early announcement he had been accidentally destroyed was an error. He was captured alive today in Mexico, and plans are underway to fly him back across the border in a troop carrier transport. <laughs> Quote me 
is saying that the nation and its representatives in Congress have nothing but gratitude for our sister republic south of the border, for their unstinting cooperation. And we're proud of Major Baird and the way he handled the problem of the colossal man. It was a good job all around. Well, now that he's being brought back to the United States, what does Congress plan to do about him? Uh, do about whom? Why, the giant man. Oh, as, as far as I know, that matter doesn't come under congressional jurisdiction. Uh, I was given to understand the Department of Medical Research takes over from this point on. There's nothing in our directives about the disposition of a 60-foot giant. Naturally, we'll do what we can in a scientific way, but it's impossible for this department to assume the responsibility of his feeding and custody. Why don't you take this question up with the Health and Welfare Department? <laughs> Yes, the Manning case was referred to us here at Health and Welfare, but we found it lay outside the scope of our original appropriation. I have an idea it was turned over to Congress for action during the present session. I can't imagine who told you to call me. The problem isn't one for the legislative branch to settle. Uh, why don't you call the Pentagon? <laughs> Tell the pilot to circle the field once more. US-11034, you are to circle the field again. Roger. He has enough fuel left for five more minutes, Mayor. I can't understand you're not giving your permission for him to land under those circumstances. I think I've made our position pretty clear. We have no facilities for a giant here. When that plane runs out of gas, it's coming down whether you like it or not. It can't stay any longer than is necessary to refuel and take off again. Take off for where? We need time to decide what to do with him. Can't you find us a warehouse to keep him in temporarily? Our warehouses are all located in the heart of the city. This creature's presence there would constitute too great a police problem. Now that applies to every other large downtown building, including the Coliseum. Have you considered the Hollywood Bowl? We can't leave him exposed to the weather, even if he is a giant. Well, I can't make any further suggestions. That hangar doesn't seem to be in use. Well, that's impossible. This airport is one of the major traffic centers of the Western world. Do you realize what it would mean if an uncontrollable monster should get loose here? I give you my word. We won't keep him here a minute longer than is absolutely necessary. All right. You may tell the ship to come in for a landing. Troop carrier US-11034, you may land on runway 170. Keeping Glenn here at the airport. Well, I'm holding him here till Washington decides what to do with him. What to do with him? He ought to be in a hospital getting treatment. They don't make hospitals that big, Joyce. Besides, as yet, the doctors haven't turned up anything that can help him. Why don't they treat him with sulfahydrol? Isn't that what they said would cure him? Well, they found it stopped his growth, but I'm afraid it won't reverse it. I see. Well, they can't keep him here as if he was some kind of cattle. It's just for the time being. I'm afraid the world doesn't think of a 60-foot man the way a sister does. necessary to keep him tied down like this. If I could trust him, I could let him have more freedom. As it is, I have to play it safe. Glenn Manning! As you see, he doesn't even know his name. Colonel Manning! Colonel Manning!
feet a day. The moment, he's 18 feet tall. Tomorrow, he'll be 26 feet. The next day, 35, maybe 40, and the next day... I just don't want to grow anymore. I don't want to grow anymore! Injection. I doubt if we'll get a second chance. You ready? One, two, three. The guard is reaching down. Oh, oh, oh. 
planes with tear gas. An anesthetic would do better than tear gas. Get some hair on the devil. Captain, get reinforcements. Sir. What are you going to do to him? I don't know, but I can't let him loose among a million people. Are you going to have to kill him? If it comes down to it, I will. I'm responsible don't, for the lives don't, of others first. Don't, please, him don't, second. God, don't, please. Sergeant! Don't, don't. See that Miss Manning gets back to her hotel and stays there. <laughs> Immediately. This is Major Bear here. Get all the aircraft into the air at once. That goes for the Air Force jet south end of the field. Right. City Council's up in arms about this. The public has a right to protection, you know. Well, we understand your position, Mr. Mayor. I came out from Washington for the sole purpose of straightening this thing out. And we're here to decide what's to be done. He's safe now, is he? Well, he's too weak to break loose at the moment. He lost considerable blood in his attempt to escape. Besides that, we've taken extra precautions with him. Let me show you. We keep a watch on him night and day. Those manacles were specially wrought to stand 10 times his estimated strength. We have them anchored in cement, weighing two tons and sunk 12 feet in the earth. Guards have been doubled, and we keep a reserve force on standby duty. And there's not much chance he'll give us any more trouble for the time being. Well, you certainly have taken measures, but you can't expect to keep him here for life. Have you any idea what'll happen to him eventually? Well, that depends. Do you see any hope that he'll ever improve? Well, I'd rather have you ask Dr. Carmichael. Dr. Carmichael! Dr. Carmichael, the mayor. Doctor, how do you do? General Nelson. How do you do, General? What can you tell him about your patient, Doctor? Well, the big question now is his mind. He may be suffering from amnesia, shell shock, loss of memory, whatever you want to call it. In that case, we have techniques now that will bring him out of it. On the other hand, if his brain tissue has suffered injury, he'll be a psychopathic case and a menace until he dies. Is there any way of telling? An examination would do that. How soon can you proceed with it? Almost immediately. Well, please do so. We'll decide what's to be done with Manning as soon as we have the doctor's findings. We'll keep you posted, gentlemen. And I'll check with you before I return to Washington, Major. Yes, sir. But I tell you, a man's life depends on this plasma. I know 10 gallons is a lot, but Dr. Carmichael explained the case to you this morning. 
I can't sit here and argue about it. It's needed right away. Just a moment, please. Dr. Carmichael. Will you talk to the Red Cross people, please? They refuse to send any more plasma for Glenn. They say we've used too much already. Mark. This is Major Baird. My men and I will see that you get back all the blood we use for this case. Now you send over what we need immediately. Thank you. Goodbye. They'll have it here in half an hour. Oh, Major. Wait. I want to thank you. Forget it. I'm sorry for what I said yesterday. I know you've tried to save Glenn as much as you could. You look tired, Joyce. Isn't it time you went home? I suppose it is. There's an army car waiting outside, if, if you'd like to go home in that. With a soldier to see me to the door? This time I'll do it myself. This is an electroencephalograph. It records impulses set off by different parts of the brain. It records them on this paper, making these wavy lines. Now we're going to try to stimulate your brother's mind with various ideas. If one happens to arouse a response, it will cause a tiny electric current to occur in his brain, and that in turn will be greatly amplified by this machine. So it will register on this paper. What will that tell us? If he responds to anything, it means curable amnesia, if not. I understand. Will you get this now, please? I'll be down in a minute. I'll get the instrument ready. Can you hook this up, please? Bill, bring a projector. Set it up over there. Is the screen going to be all right up there, Doctor? Yes, that's fine. Dr. Richardson? Never seen such dreadful facial injuries. How were they sustained? When he fell from Boulder Dam, he must have hit his head on the rocks. Of course, the wounds went untended, so scar tissue formed as you see it. The shock of such a fall would indicate the possibility of amnesia, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. I don't understand it. I get a normal nervous reaction. That's certainly not typical of amnesia. Looks like brain trauma, I'm afraid. Are you ready for the association tests? Are you ready, Phil? Let's have the first slide. Glenn Manning! Look at the picture in front of you. Does it mean anything to you? You went to college there, Manning. 
Better try another, we're not getting any response. Look again, Manny. Look at this ship. It brought you back to this country after your service in Korea. Try another. Look at this, Manning. Look at this face. Do you recognize it? Does this man mean anything to you? Look at it, Manning. Do you understand? It's your face. What do you think, Doctor? I don't see any use continuing. He doesn't seem to respond. Let me try, please. You must remember, Glenn. Try. Your childhood. Remember your bicycle, Glenn? It was red and it had a light on it. We had fun when we were kids, didn't we, Glenn? Your first high school date, when Dad let you take the car. You were so proud. Oh, you must remember, Glenn. has a ship ready to take him to the island. It's a small one, about 60 miles off the coast. That doesn't leave us much time. Well, it'll take all night to get him ready. Told the oars yet? No. You'd better. He's at her hotel. Well, I'll see you back here in about a half an hour. provided for. An airlift is being set up and food will be parachuted down to him. He'll be supplied with everything he needs. Just the same, it's horrible. There's no place in the civilized world for a creature that big. You see what's happened to him. He'll be happier by himself. Oh, I suppose I should agree with you, but I can't help feeling terribly sorry for him. Well, look at it this way. Glenn has become a total stranger to you. Not your brother anymore, but a monster with the instincts of a wild beast and there's nothing you and i or anyone else can do that will ever change him back to what he once was on this island? The Navy will land an inspection party every month. Oh, I'd like to go with them if I can. I thought you would, so it's been arranged for you. Good night, Joyce. Oh, wait. I know you've done everything you can for him, Mark. And for me. Thank you. Hello? Major Baird? Just a moment. He's right here. Major Baird here. When? Well, it was checked okay just ten minutes ago. Glenn has escaped. 
Let me speak to Dr. Carmichael. I can't, sir. He's dead. This is an all-points bulletin. The Colossal Man is loose in Los Angeles. All units report immediately upon contact. I repeat, the Colossal Man is loose in Los Angeles. All units report immediately upon contact. Will they know where you are? Yes, I told Harris would be here in the office waiting for news. Let me have the police department. I'm calling for Major Baird. Oh, yes, we know he's escaped. Has he been sighted yet? I see. Thank you. No police reports. He hasn't been seen. Where could he be? Baird here. He's been spotted in Griffith Park. Do you have a map? Yes, I've got the map of Griffith Park right here. Order up the armored artillery. We'll surround the area and move the infantry in on him till we make contact. Don't open fire until he's isolated from all civilians, and then only if absolutely necessary. Have the police block off all access roads. Move up our communications. We'll set up field headquarters in the hills. I'll take command. Right. Department, here it is. Attention all units, attention all units. The Colossal Man is in the Griffith Park area. Car 42, 52, and 61 proceed to the Riverside Drive entrance. Cars 40, 41, and 46 proceed to the Ferndale entrance. Roadblocks will be set up at once. We interrupt our regular program to bring you a special police bulletin. The Colossal Man has broken loose and is now known to be in the vicinity of Griffith Park. Steps are being taken to recapture him. Do not go near the area. I repeat, do not go near the area. You may endanger your life by doing so, and you are certain to impede emergency services which need all the space they can get. This station is dispatching a mobile unit for on-the-spot coverage at the scene in Griffith Park. Looking for a Sputnik or something. Well, hurry them up and get out of the park as quick as you can. What's going to happen? There's trouble. The giant man's on the loose around here. Let's go. Hurry it up. All aboard. Here. He's somewhere between us and the observatory up there. Major Baird at the Griffith Park roadblock. All white units, turn your lights on. Ladies and gentlemen, you're witnessing a manhunt for the biggest man in existence. We're in Griffith Park. It's been surrounded by troops. They're moving up to try to make contact. 
That building you see up there is the Griffith Observatory. Now the searchlights are swinging over to our left. I want a jury to cover the mountain on all sides, particularly here and here. in a rocket ship. What's to stop me? They've got all the problems solved. You wouldn't have anybody to talk to. It's cold up here. I wish Mom would have made me bring my coat. I talked to all the people back on Earth by radio. Maybe I'd even call you, Lori. Lori! Then when your father's objecting to you talking on the phone too long, you just tell him it was someone on the moon. Uh, that wouldn't make any difference to my father. Arthur! I wonder what's going on down there. Maybe the Martians have landed. The teacher's been calling us. Let her call. Boy, look at all those searchlights. I'd like you to meet some of the officers working here with the Army to restore order. A any trouble with the uh, public causing congestion of the disaster area? Not this time. They seem to be keeping the roads pretty well open for us. I understand you were able to get everyone out of the park before anything could happen to them. That's right. Now, we really appreciate you men at a time like this. Oh, officer, there was a school bus from Westmont Junior High up at the planetarium tonight. Did you see it come down? All cars were checked out of the park some time ago. Are you sure? My daughter Lori was on it. I've been waiting for her down at the corner. You see, we live in Glendale, and I thought if I picked her up here and drove her home, she could get her sleep. She has to get up so early in the morning on school days. Well, I brought her coat in case she's cold. Well, wait a minute, and I'll check. Thank you. Arthur! Lori! We'd better go now. There's nothing for you to worry about. The bus is still up there, but it seems to be safe. Can't I go through? Let me go to Lori, please. She ought to have her coat. I wanted her to take it when she left the house this morning. Only I forgot to remind her. She'll be all right without it. Just you take it easy and wait right here. Lori Edwards and Arthur Lang, where have you been? Oh, over there, watching the light. There are a lot of people down Let's there. Let's go. Something's the matter. Well, get in the bus. Quickly, we have to go. Look! Look at the giant! <laughs>
Try to think. 